Hello children, I hope you are fine. I'm doing very well at home. I am Mrs. Dhanupma Zaridi and I am going to show you a video. This video has been presented by Patanjali Rishpur. So without wasting much of my time and your time, let's proceed to the video. Today's topic is the first cities of India's subcontinent part 2. Occupation of the people of Indus Farming The Indus farmers grew wheat, barley, gram. They used ploughs and sickles and different methods of irrigation. They domesticated many animals, including oxen, buffaloes, goats, sheep, pigs, camels, etc. Pot making was another important industry. The Indus people used potter's wheels, Pots were made with fine clay and then glazed and decorated. Large urns were also made. Toy making and sculpture was also a part of the industry. Making terracotta, toys, statues, figures of animals, etc. was a major industry. The Indus people knew the art of spinning and weaving. Woven cloth unearthed at Mohenjo-daro Spindles, the statue of a shawl-clad man and terracotta figurines of women wearing skirts are evidences that people were skilled in the art of spinning thread and weaving cloth. Occupation As far as metal casting is concerned, the Indus people produced tools and weapons of copper and bronze. The bronze statues of the dancing girl show their mastery in the art of bronze casting. Brick making was also an important craft. The bricks found were more or less of uniform size following a fixed standard which indicates brick making was also in practice. Seal making. Seals were two, more than 2000 seals have been excavated from different sites. Most seals are square or rectangular, usually made of statite. Most of them have short inscriptions and the impression of a bull, buffalo, tiger, goat, rhinoceros or an elephant. Jewelers uh, were skilled in jewelry make making. In Indus Valley, may they made a variety of ornaments using materials such as clay, copper, gold, silver, and precious and semi-precious stones. Trade also thrived in the Indus civilization. Trading was conducted according to set of rules. The merchants used uniform weights and measures. Articles made of materials that were not available in the region have been excavated. This suggests that long distance trade existed. A seal depicting a seagoing sheep suggests that there was overseas trade. Goods imported from outside the Indus Valley probably included copper from Rajasthan, gold from Karnataka, and tin and precious stones from Iran and Afghanistan. The most cities of Indus probably had trade links with Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia records Mention Meluha, a name used for the Indus ports. Administration in the Indus cities had some kind of organization which took care of sanitation, regulated trade, collected taxes in the form of grains, and maintained law and order. A city was probably administered by a group of people who might have been priests or wealthy merchants. As far as religious worship by the Indus people is concerned, they worship nature in the form of animals, birds and trees. For example, the humped bull, the dove and the peepal tree were held sacred. A mother goddess was also worshipped. Seals bearing the three-headed figure of a male god have been found. Some of them depict the god in yogic posture and surrounded by animals. Shiva and Pashupati, worshipped today, is probably a later adaptation. No temple structures have been identified among the remains. Some scholars believe 
that the great bath at Mohenjo-daro was used during religious ceremonies. Lothal and Dholavira in Lothal, um, which was situated at the head of the Gulf of Kambat, it had a flourishing bead-making industry, a storehouse, and possibly a dockyard from which maritime trade was carried on. Dholavira is situated in Khadir Island in run of Kach. Dholavira had a middle town, a lower town, a space for fu public functions, and several water tanks beside the citadel. Here, stone was used in the construction of some buildings. An inscription of 10 letter of the Indus script has been found. Decline of the Indus Civilization This great civilization lasted from 2500 BC to 1500 BC approximately. Excavations have really revealed that the city of Mohenjo-daro was destroyed over and over again and was rebuilt at the same site nine times. The exact cause of the decline of this great civilization are not known. It is suggested that the cities might have been destroyed by earthquakes, floods, or a change in the course of the Indus. Children, now I end the chapter. Thank you for listening to me very patiently. Have a good day.